Not much has changed since 2003. This poem is called The War's First Sunday, March 23rd, 03. And the only thing that's wrong with this poem that's not timely is that it's all about the beginning of spring rather than the beginning of fall. Um, other than that, there are so many things that are still true uh, about um, this poem. But the part that's going to be in the sidewalk, you'll recognize when I get to, and now I want to ask what of this day will survive. So it's a much longer poem. It was, it's a page long. It was originally printed in Mobius. Um, so I'll give you the whole poem, and then hopefully you'll be there Sunday at 4 p.m. If you come to Weary Traveler, uh, there'll be a dedication ceremony for walking all over poetry. <laughs> the War's First Sunday, March 23rd, 2003. This Sunday is mentioning spring again. It sends up earth, champagne sparks our skins, and melts ice cakes on inland lakes where seagulls caw and carve sky with wings curve. No seas here, but a turn of season without reason or with every reason. While our bombs carve out the insides of buildings, throw the sands of time into the eye of sky by the Tigris and the Euphrates, those biblical waters that twined around Eden and carried Idana's wedding vows, her sacred marriage and her descent to the underworld, worded the miracle of spring's rebirth from dark days into lengthening light that has always been God's promise to the world. A story that the ancestors of the ancestors of the people of Iraq helped to fashion with their words and deeds, carved in clay, baked hard. A record stored until we could decipher the stories that our stories, that told our stories, what stories can be told? Of gardens and gods, of death and rebirth. And now I want to ask, what of this day will survive? To tell of this small, Midwest street, studded with signs that say, war is not the way, where the bookseller rakes her garden, where the teacher breaks bread with her family at an outdoor table, where there is a vine but no fig tree in this northern zone, where a father carries a month-old baby who is wide eyes under a tiny white cap, and where a young boy in a tree-hung swing is the turning point of this still-spinning, kaleidoscopic earth. <laughs> so we had something borrowed, something old, um, this is something relatively new in the sense that I don't think I've ever read it in public yet, and it's recently rescued from a notebook, you know, onto the computer, onto the printer. I uh, can't even find the file that I printed this from, so um, it's called God's Plan, and when I think about what are the changes we're supposed to make, um, it's the hope that the Republican plan is not God's plan. Um, but does God have a plan for us? How do we begin to ask the questions? Well, you know, usually we go back and we study history. So we go back to the beginning. God's plan. So God said to God's other parts, I think I can make a universe in a day, or six, and began to make some divisions to make some things by separating them from other things. So God divided the light from the dark. 
Well, and a little twilight slipped between to blur the lines. Then the earth and the heaven were rendered separate, but for the elusive horizon markers that send us to ever greater distances in search of clear distinction. And again, there's the issue of dry land versus the great watery wet as the ragged shoreline is tugged this way and that while landfill and tidal wave compete for territory. The organic and the inorganic keep rubbing off on each other. While the question of what's alive, when is it alive, and what's dead is not a simple choice in the beginning or the end. Brain, heart, three seconds, three months, monitors, drip tubes, law courts, familial brutality, men and women clearly separate, or the same, except for the trick of the genitals, a division of parts so there can be a uh, coming together. Does God, the Great One, have many sets of genitals, plug site and plug, a hole ever expanding, its caverns of pulsation, a tower ever rising to shrink and rise again, or wholly other possibilities? Forces on the right say, don't talk about God's genitals. <laughs> on the left, don't talk about God. Except when you're talking about Americans' God-given rights not to kowtow to the God-mongers among us. What else don't we understand about being made in God's image? Does God have a brow, a mouth, a shoulder? Is God's great bosom like ours or like the prairie? Hands like tree limbs always branching forth into ever greater intricacy, unlike our fingers that are inarticulate stubs by comparison. And God's brain, volcanic, still shaking, us, loose, 